Man. This movie done found a way to piss me off. Gracias por ver la esquina de Jody. Thank you for watching Jody's Corner. YouTube was good. It's your boy Jody Joe. Welcome to Jody's Corner. This is a movie review for Judas and the Black Messiah, starring um, Lakeith Stanfield and Daniel Kaluuya. It's a story that takes place in the late 1960s where the second in command of the Black Panther Party, Fred Hampton of Illinois, was leading a revolution of. Uh, freedom fighters against police corruption and brutality and the whole patriarchy of the corrupt United States government to the point which they were getting more powerful, more powerful and more traction and more traction and, and more people were starting to listen to them to the point where they became the number one target for the federal Bureau of investigation and the United States government. It was the closest point that I believe a uh, black revolution has gotten to actually liberating black people it was the number one threat for the united states and they targeted the black panther party with a tremendous unwavering force from california to new york either murdering or throwing in prison or burying under the prison prominent members of the black panther party they waged they raised war against the black panther party completely demolishing it by the 1970s and this film takes place as the life of fred hampton and his uh already at the height of his uh fame he's uh 21 years old as you guys know by the true story that i watched i read a documentary i, I read up on him i watched the documentary and uh he was 21 years old when he was calculatedly assassinated and systematically murdered you know by the federal bureau of investigation and the chicago police department Yada, yada, yada. Uh, this movie pissed me off. I I should have watched WandaVision tonight. <laughs> I got to tell you, man, because I wasn't mentally ready to, to watch this film. You know, uh, I feel like if you're having a good day, probably don't watch this movie if you feel how I feel about, you know, human rights and black folk and just overall decency. This film made me feel so pissed off by the end. It made me feel like I watched the film Detroit in theaters. I saw it like I think I saw it by myself. I said, let me go. It was a 10 o'clock show late at night. I said, let me go watch Detroit. And that's the last time I felt this way. After watching Detroit and I was on my way home, I was so pissed off. I legitimately prayed in my car on the way from downtown L.A. on my way home that a cop doesn't pull me over because I was probably going to go to jail that night. Because if a cop pulled me over, I'm just livid. I'm giving mouths. I'm freaking, I don't know what I would have probably did. But Detroit made me feel that way. And this shit right here, I don't know. This is uh, this is perfect timing and terrible timing at the same goddamn time. It depends on who's the one consuming it. This will shed light and make appreciation for where we are as a society today. People will watch this movie and feel like we've come so far, you know, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Muhammad Ali, you know, um, Fred Hampton and all the others will be proud of where we are and appreciate the sacrifices that were made for a lot of us to be where we are today. Then the other hand, some people going to be like, break these motherfucking police, bro. Break this goddamn government, bro. Man, let's rally up and let's get some popping. I'm of the type where I felt kind of like both ways. There was points in this movie where I was like, oh, man, I'm just watching the story like, okay, I'm seeing, you know, this man, uh, Fred Hampton, legitimately wage war against the police. Like, the, some of the scenes that I've seen in this movie, I don't know if it was actually true. I know it's based on true events, which means they're adding stuff in there to make an actual story. But I don't know. I'm not sure how I feel about at the Black Panther headquarters, Black Panther members 
with shotguns out the window, just shooting a war with the police of Chicago. That's unbelievable to me. You know, I feel like that's just bad optics. If that really happened, wow, I kind of understand why they got took down. See, here's the thing. I have limited knowledge of this stuff, you know, um, even if I could read as many much stories or read, watch interviews as much as I want, you know, nothing beats actually living through it. So I'm not going to act like I know a lot, but this is what I do know. Some of the things that they did in this movie entice police to murder them. Now, I don't know if, you know, that was their intention to show these different scenes in this film, but if your intention was to tell the truth and this really happened, bravo. But if your intention was to shed light on police brutality, was to shed light on systemic racism, which absolutely exists now today and even more so existed back then, then I don't think it behoves you to actually show Black Panthers rolling up on police in the streets and shooting them point blank. I don't know if that's considered effective. That's something that I acknowledge when I watch this movie. So whether it be true or not, I don't know. I'm inclined to believe that they were more smart. They were smarter and more organized than that. Blows me away to see some of the scenes that I saw in here. It's almost was like justification for why the Black Panthers had to be taken down. Like in this movie, Judas and the Black Messiah, I saw reasons why the FBI, the Chicago Police Department, assassinated people because you're showing these fools rolling around with choppers shooting at cops like blah blah what's happening rolling up on them there's this there's a scene i don't want to spoil anything but there's it's 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 unbelievable it's unbelievable some of this stuff so it's like yeah i know black people fought back and i know panthers were organized and probably did have to handle some bit but the way they were going about doing in this movie like it was like going to get ice cream cone yeah i went to get ice cream cone shot at some police you know what i'm saying killed a couple of them you know what i'm saying anyway they didn't have no more strawberries so i said what so i started tripping man but on my way back man i saw another cop die uh, i'm like it's i'm like wait a minute is it was <laughs> I don't know. This is part of the film. I'm only going to talk about the film because I don't know shit about the histories. I didn't live back then, so I can't speak on it. I don't know what happened at the headquarters. I didn't. I don't know if every Friday police came on like, what's happening? Want a war? And they just reload. I mean, you know, it's possible. Besides that, you know, I just need, I need to put that out there because as a viewer, it, in, it validates why police were so heavy against taking down the Black Panther Party. Now, listen, know about the free breakfast program, about them trying to build clinics and all that. All that stuff is beautiful and it's amazing. The community coming together to help fundraise and giving people jobs, a lot of good stuff. But I'm telling you, the way they were handling business in this movie as a viewer of this film, I completely understand why they got wiped out. Now, that does not excuse Hoover, Mr. Cross-Dressing Trash Man Hoover, who's played by Martin Sheen, which he had all kind of makeup and stuff done to his face. You could tell it's him, but it's like, dang, look at all the stuff they did to this man's face to try to make him look like Hoover. I'm like, all right, for sure, you know. He was in this film. He was a heavy presence. He was a racist bigot piece of shit. And then you have uh, Todd from Breaking Bad uh, with the, you know, the, the FBI agent that was running Lakeith Stanfield's Uncle Tom character. He had the perfect look. Thick, big, white, freckles, Dennis the Menace haircut, and beady, no life having eyes. God dang. I didn't like his character. I saw in the, in this film, there was a, uh, there was a little bit of breadcrumbs there for you to kind of understand where he was coming from. There was a little bit of uh, moments in this film where it was like, sympathize with this FBI agent, understand this FBI agent. But I got to be 100% honest with you. There was a narrative within this movie that the FBI agent was trying to sell to Lakeith Stanford, the snitch, the Uncle Tom. The story is the Uncle Tom sold out one of his best friends and got Fred Hampton killed. The statements that were being said by Todd, the FBI agent, 
rang true in this movie. And some of the statements that he was saying were like the black, the black Panthers are terrorists. The black Panthers are no different than the Ku Klux Klan is what his ideals were. And he was selling that to Lakeith Seinfeld to get him on his team so he could be a snitch and help take them down. And then you instituted scenes in this movie that validated and proved what that FBI agent was saying. So I'm asking myself, is this just how it really happened? Is Are these the actual events of what went down with the Black Panther Party in Chicago, Illinois? Or is this a propaganda movie to make the Black Panther Party look bad, unorganized, cop-murdering terrorists? I ask myself that question because I'm confused by this film. There's great empowerment in this movie and damnation at the same time. Ryan Coogler is involved with this movie, and I got a lot of respect for Ryan Coogler. Love Ryan Coogler. He's a very talented person. So I don't, I, the, the, the point of these movies, ladies and gentlemen, for me, is can you affect me? Can you move me? Success. You made me uh, sad. You made me uh, anxious in this movie, and you made me incredibly angry in this film. So... Yeah, kudos to that. I got to give respect and kudos for that. But I have to admit that there's some scenes in this film that really rub me the wrong way. But even, even that being said, I could appreciate the art of this film. Uh, the supporting cast in this film were decent. You know, there's the, I can't remember the actress's name who plays the love interest of Daniel Kaluuya, his baby mother. Uh, who was in the film with Jamie Foxx and Joseph Gordon-Levitt on Netflix that came out a few months ago. Oh, I forgot the name of it. Crank, Volt, Debt, Level Up, Bibby Up, whatever the heck, the superhero movie. It was the black girl in there. She was in here. I was like, okay, for sure. She did her thing. You know, so there were some powerful speeches in there, you know, that were, that were really, the I Am A Revolution speech was pretty dope. Um, I liked the raw footage that they showed. And with Lakeith Steinfeld's character, you know, I think Lakeith Steinfeld did a good job because Lakeith Steinfeld's a really good actor. I, I, Daniel Kaluuya was good in this. Lakeith Steinfeld were, were, were good in this as well. He was playing the, the, the snitch, the Uncle Tom, the piece of shit. But in this movie, he brought a level and purely with his acting ability. There's, this, isn't, this, is just in, this isn't just stuff in the script that says, look sad, look at war with yourself. These are the the qualities that Lakeith Steinfeld is bringing to the role. And with his acting performance, he was portraying somebody who was at war with his soul for selling out his brother and continuing to sell out his brothers, his comrades, for a check and to dodge prison. Constantly, you would see scenes of him like literally dying inside. And showing how his he had a, a tremendous disgust with himself. And I was moved by that. I was like, man, he actually is really feeling what's going down. There was a really powerful scene with Lakeith Steinfeld just going to this random bar to try to cut loose and get a couple of drinks. And a surprise character shows up and introduces another level of just mind blowage that was really tense had a lot of tension for me in this bar scene with this introductory character who came into the scene and delivered a powerful uh impact and feeling into me and i thought that was really effective that was probably the most effective part of the movie outside of the ending um all of the things that lakeith steinfeld was selling to me i was buying I understood the situation and I sympathized with him to an extent based off what the things that he was doing. He was a really good actor, even as the character. He was out here snitching and being one of the most brother, brother soldiers out there where nobody would question him. You know, he was, a, I guess what the FBI would call a good snitch, a good rat. So 
he still managed to make me feel for him some type of level of sympathy deep down in my heart until the end of this movie. At the end of this movie, it showed raw footage from 1990, the only interview that the real snitch made to PBS. And I saw him and I've never seen him before. I saw the real person and I heard what was coming out of his mouth. I saw his demeanor. This was a man trying to cap for what he did. This is a man that had no remorse and tried to paint a picture of an image of how he wanted the world to see him. This man is an ultimate piece of shit. And I'm mad at Lakeith Steinfeld for trying to interpret him like he had a soul. Because I looked in this motherfucker's eyes and I saw he ain't had no soul. This motherfucker's a bona fide snitch that tore his brother down. And on top of that, tried to make light of the situation like, oh, I was doing a good thing. Anybody could do what I did. I was out there on the trenches. He's like he was, he was mind tricking himself. I said, break this motherfucker, bro. I saw like 30 seconds of this fool. I said, I got you all figured out, you piece of shit. Why the freak did Lakeith Stanfield give you so much love in this movie by making it look like he was really at war with himself? It's another thing that pissed me off. But the most powerful thing that pissed me off is what you know, what we saw, what what we what we heard of in in the in the in the the news and on YouTube or uh reading up in a book. The plot to murder and assassinate Fred Hampton and whoever was in that apartment. There were seven survivors. There were a lot of people in there. 99 shots fired. 99 shots fired. The, the cold game, how you had the cold game, how you executed that, how they executed that scene of what Fred Hampton had in his body and how they came in there and the way he was laid up. And that powerful scene of the of the the baby mama just sitting there with the foreground back there, and you just waiting for it to happen, and the way it just happened, the way they haphazardly just exit, man, this movie done pissed me off, ladies and gentlemen. If you are having a good day, don't watch this movie. This shit will piss you off. At the end of the day, I appreciate the art. I appreciate the story. It was powerful performances from Daniel Kaluuya, Kaluuya and Lakeith Steinfeld. I feel like there was good intentions here, but I feel like there's some murkiness going on here with the portrayal. I don't know. I'm, I'm ignorant to the fact, but I just smell something ain't right. And there's one more thing. They aired that goddamn shit on PBS on Martin Luther King Day. Let me say this out loud on my channel. Freak PBS. I ain't ever watching anything on PBS, and I ain't even watched shit on PBS in the last few years anyway. Freak PBS, bro. Freak them. And the way this whole entire freaking government, systemic racism absolutely exists. Man, this shit pissed me off. But at the end of the day, I could appreciate the art for what it was. I give Judas and the Black Messiah a B. Put down in the comment section what you guys think. Let me know how you guys feel. Did this movie piss you off as much as it did me? My gosh. I know some people who don't have the heart and don't care about this stuff, they're not going to feel anything. It's going to be like, oh, it's just a movie. But this really spoke to me. This really made me feel some type of way. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I'm Jody Joe, and I'm out this thing. Doses.